Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And um, we're on the third winery for uh, the Texas wine tour that I did. And uh, I got two wines from them. We're going to do them both in the same show instead of having one, one each. Um, we've got two wines from the Alamosa Wine Cellars. And um, it's one of the people that I've been following on Twitter for a little bit. They've been following, following me back. Uh, the funny little stories I walk into the winery... Again, it's kind of another one of those middle of nowhere, but at least I don't have to take dirt roads to get there. But um, no cell service. Um, like even got on the highway, I couldn't get any cell service. But um, uh, drive up there, there was um, get into the tasting room. There was one other car there. Uh, you know, this is a well. This was on this was actually on a Saturday. Um, so uh, one other car there it was a couple in there. They were talking with with somebody. You know, I didn't know who it was. And there was another person in the wine tasting room to, to help me out. So I'm having her, you know, go through the wines. I've, I've tasted like a few of the wines. And then um, I'm like, oh, I do this blog. She turns to the other lady and says, oh, this, this is somebody with a wine blog. And they're like, oh, wait a minute. Who are you? And I tell them. And then she happens to call her husband and say, hey, one of your Twitter friends is here. So um, so it was, uh, it was really cool um, to, uh, to kind of run into them like that, you know, kind of be like, hey, one of your Twitter friends. So uh, you get Jim and Karen there, um, uh, Jim and Karen Johnson. And uh, so it was really a lot of fun to uh, hang out with them for a little bit. So we're going to go into the wines. Um, another cool thing about that wine, particular wine visit, uh, we never, we, I had meant to sit down with, with Jim and we kind of go over his stuff, but we just kind of were talking and we never got a chance to sit down. So Jim, um, Next time we come up there, we'll, let's do kind of a like sit down and get on camera and talk about some stuff. Um, but the cool thing was that, uh, <clears throat> well, first, Jim comes out with uh, a beaker of, of grape juice, okay, you know, wine, and he's like, okay, the time to guess the varietal. And uh, I'm going to say I didn't guess correctly, but I got close. But, um, you know, I was on the spot and I was all nervous and there's other there were other people in there and... We were talking about, you know, here's the wine blogger. And, you know, I've done my first level test and all that. And um, so, you know, in, in like this kind of, I don't know, a bit of nervousness, I, I, I say something. I forgot what I said it was. I think I called it Merlot or something like that. And I'm like, oh, Merlot. And I'm like, he's like, no. And I said, okay, let's calm down. And this is kind of where, you know, this type of thing and me taking notes and, and really making that association so that when I do a blind tasting again, that I'm not as far off as it was. So I decided, go with what it's not, like I was taught to do, and um, which I really haven't been able to do blind tastings you know, since the whole uh, sommelier test. And I didn't even get to taste the wine back then. I just could smell it and listen to everyone's comments. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I, I guessed that it was uh, Tempranillo, but it was a different Spanish varietal, gra um, uh, Graciano? Graciano. So um, at least I was close. The other cool thing was that I got to go back into the barrel room and do some barrel tasting. So um, anyway, so let's go ahead and get right into the wines. The first one we're going to do is the um, 2009, I'm sorry, 2005 uh, El Guapo. That um, roughly translates into the handsome one. You know, somebody who's uh, usually is about a gentleman, usually they're handsome, um, but it can also mean pretty. So, but generally it means, you know, you're very handsome, good looking. So, which of course that's me, El Guapo, as I will say sometimes. Uh, so 2009. Now this uh, this wine is a blend of Tempranillo, Monastrell, and Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, the percentages of which are 90% Tempranillo, 5% Monastrell, and 5% um, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. 
because there's only 5% left. Um, so another one of these uh, winemakers is like, listen, let's take some Spanish varietals and make some wines out of it. Okay, so more Tempranillo. Um, Jim says that he uh, was the first person to plant Tempranillo in the state. Um, Ed Aller also had uh, made that claim when I was visiting him. So they probably they probably planted it the same year, um, or at least had the same idea to uh, to plant it. So um, let's go right off the bat. Let's take a look at it. So color, um, I'm going to call it medium. It's not really deep. Um, if you angle it, granted, I don't have you know a nice white piece of paper to uh, to put it under, but um, it's it's uh, it's almost almost that brickish color that I had with the uh, with that Merlot, but we're going to call it a medium color. Um, we're going to say it's not brick, but maybe more of a garnet, and uh, it's clear. Almost every wine you're going to drink is going to be pretty clear. Most wines, because they, they, they go through a clarification process to get all the haze out of it, because Americans don't like cloudy wine, um, or fining, or whatever you want to call it. Um, all right, so let's get right into the aroma. I've got two wines to do. All right, so I'm getting kind of that, um, well, first of all, before you even try to identify it, it it's, I'm going to say, kind of low in the aromas. Um, I wouldn't say it's a closed nose, because I actually can smell stuff, but it's not very, it's not like really coming out of the glass. Well, we'll go with moderate. It's probably a little bit more moderate. Um, we know it's a 2005, so in, in, in the wine world, that's going to be some age. It's not going to be youthful. Youthful is one to three years, so we're beyond that. And um, do I, can I tell that off of the nose? Yes, and this is why it's not fruit forward. More, when it's more fruit forward, you're going to have, it, it's going to be a little more youthful. When you start getting into the minerality, that's when some age happens, okay? A little bit of knowledge there. All right, so I, I get a bit of smokiness. Um, I feel like I'm at a barbecue. Um, and again, we were talking earlier today, well, today being the 22nd of June, even though this episode is like a week from now, um, on the Psalm Chat with uh, Rick Backus. I hope that's how you pronounce your last name. I don't know if it's Bacchus, 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 but we'll say Bacchus, okay? Um, and some other people on Twitter, and they were asking about some wines for barbecue. Tempranillo, my suggestion. Um, also suggested Merlot, but, um, you know, but there are, some other, there are some other wines out there, but I just piped in on that. But I feel like I'm at a barbecue, so I'm getting a little bit of that, um, some earthiness, not earthiness, but smoke. And some, I wouldn't say I would call it jamminess, but kind of dried fruit. A little bit of dried fruit on the nose. All right, let's go for the taste. So we're going to say it's, it's a bit dry, um, medium bodied, almost light, but medium bodied, um, acidity, it's got some good acid to it. Um, I find it's kind of tart, um, a little bit tartness to it, and um, really it, it's, it's low level on tannin, but I'm also going to say they're kind of soft tannins, okay? They're, it doesn't really... It's, it's, it's not a wine that goes out and hits you in the mouth. You know, it's, it's, it kind of buddies up to you a little bit. Um, 
balance. Now, this is, of course, the, the big thing about balance. Um, between the alcohol, acid, tannin, and sugar. Um, you've got some... Um, I'm getting a little bit of the alcohol. The alcohol is at 13%. Um, just 13? Yeah, 13%. Um, that's not too high for, for a wine, but I get a little bit, a touch of it. But nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, the acid, the tannins, I think they work a little bit well together. I think, I think the acid's kind of a little bit high. I mean, kind of in conflict with the tannins. Um, and the sugar, you know, the, the, it's dry, but there's a tad of sweetness. I mean, I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's good. You know, um, the, in this book, you have, you have three choices, good, fair, and unbalanced. So, you know, hopefully almost all wine is good. Definitely a good balance. Uh, flavor intensity. Um, I find it's flavorful. Now, kind of like that Merlot from McReynolds, I get this tartness to it, okay? Which I know I acidity tart. Um, kind of a, a tart, tart like raspberry type of type of thing going on. Um, I still get that smoke, and I still feel like I'm at a barbecue. Now, for me, the finish is kind of short. It doesn't really linger very much. Um, it, it, it kind of you, you get that you get that you get that flavorfulness. Um, you get a little bit of intensity and flavor, and then it just kind of disappears real quick. Um, definitely something I would pair with with some food. Um, not something I would probably drink on its own. But uh, I wouldn't say I, I couldn't, but um, I think I'd like to have, like, bar honestly, just I, barbecue. I just keep thinking barbecue. Some barbecue pork, like a barbecue pork sandwich, a pulled pork sandwich. That's what I would want with this wine, okay? Um, it's not too spicy. It's got, a, it's got a hint of sweetness. It's got a bit of tartness to it. Um, if you had some spicy barbecue sauce, I think that would work. And this is why I was talking about Tempranillo and, and barbecue. If it's spicy... You want something that's going to counteract the spiciness. And that's why I went, even with Merlot, if you got that little bit of fruit forward Merlot. Tasty. All right. Now, let's move on to the next wine. This is the uh, Palette uh, 2007 uh, from Alamosa Wine Cellars. This is also another blend of... Um, a few varietals. It's got, let me pour a little bit first. All right, so it has the um, following. It has Syrah, 67% Syrah, 18% Grenache. Um, though Jim kept saying Grenache, and I meant to ask him if that if he feels that he wants to, like at the Texom conference last year, um, there's, there's a group of people that kind of want to push for using the Spanish word instead of the French word, because it's a Spanish grape. So using Garnacha instead of Grenache. But anyway, uh, so 18% Grenache, 13% Mavedra, and 2% Cinso. A little bit of Cinso in there, all right? Um, oh, I didn't price this one. This was $18 at the winery. Um, this is the 2007 vintage, and it's $20 at the winery. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at the color real quick. Okay, um, it's a little bit, it's kind of similar in color with the El Guapo. It's a little bit lighter. Um, it's not pale, but a definitely, definitely a medium color. Um, I'm going to go with, again, a garnet color, uh, clear, and let's go through the aromas. Now, this is why I bought this wine. Really like it. Oh, I didn't score this one. Um, the El Guapo, I, I'd put as an 88. Forgot. All right. The palette, the palette, palette. Mm. 
Okay, on the aroma, um, it's I find it's aromatic. Um, it is a 2007. It technically is youthful, one to three ish years, um, but it doesn't. It's not really very fruit forward. At least not for me. Um, so I would say some age. Now aromas. We talk about sense of place in a wine. This smells like Texas. I just it smells like Texas. It smells like I don't know. I want to say ragweed, but it smells like being out in the vineyard or being out in the field somewhere. Uh, it, it, it's not that grassy smell that you get from a Sauvignon Blanc. You know, you smell the dirt, like smell the dust. Not it's like you're outside and, and you're out in, in nature. You've got the you've got the green, you got the leafy smells, the wood, um, you know, uh, live oak trees, you know, cedar trees, mesquite trees, maybe not mesquite, um, but you know, like you're you're walking down the you know a dirt trail. Um, it, it's, it smells like Texas. Okay, I know everywhere else has these things, but but just you know, I've lived here for so long. That it just makes me think of being out in the country, being out on a, being, being more out not in the not in a, a wooded part of, of Texas, but out in like a field somewhere. So you've got you get the mixture of grasses, of flowers, um, of the dirt. Um, you got the trees. You know any any trees that are around. You know not necessarily an open field, but you've got trees around. So I mean, it's it's kind of got you know it's all minerality. I mean, it's it's earthiness. Um, but but I really feel like I'm just outside somewhere. If, if that any of that makes sense. I gotta really wrap this up for about about fifteen minutes now. Um, dry sweet. I'm calling off dry a little bit. No, dry. Um, medium body. I'm gonna call the acid, the acid on this not tart. I'm gonna call it kind of smooth. Kind of medium tannins, but again, they're soft. Again, they're not, they don't reach up and hit you in the mouth. Um, now with this, um, good balance, flavorful. It's still, it's not so, it's not very fruit forward. It's more, it's more earthy. Um, but I do get that kind of barbecue type of feeling of it, like a, you know, a barbecue sauce type of thing. Um, on, on the aroma, what I wanted to say was it was kind of like a bright red fruit for, you know, any type of fruit on the aroma. And I get that also on the, uh, on the flavor, you know, some bright red fruits, um, nothing, nothing truly intense, but it's there. Medium finish. Now this finish, um, definitely is much longer. Um, I actually might even call it a long finish because I'm still tasting it. And there's this, there's this flavor, one flavor, and almost kind of the aroma too that I just can't pinpoint. But again, you know, maybe it's a maybe it's a bit of wood that I'm tasting, but it's it's not overpowering. Like I said, it's it's you know there's a bit of tree, I guess, you know, tree and leaf in there, so greenness. But um, this is a wine that I would definitely, you know. If I saw it out in the store, or if I was back at the winery, I'd buy another bottle. I'd give it a 90. Um, excellent wine. 
for my kind of palate, what I like, um, as we know, I tend to gravitate towards the, the earthy, mineral type of wines rather than the, than the fruit-forward wines. And I'm not talking fruit bombs, okay? Because fruit bombs are just kind of a different thing in, you know, in and of themselves for me. But um, tasty. I'd recommend both, though I like the, the palette a little bit better. And uh, visit them. If you're, in, if you're in the hill country, the northern part of the hill country, um, stop by and check them out. As always, go to the website, click the links, donate. Um, leave comments. That's one thing. No one's really leaving comments. So leave some comments. Come to the website. Let me know what you like, what you don't like. And um, we're going to see everybody again next time.